Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, the Long Beach Chief of Police, Robert Luna, as we continue our 23rd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. This is the first show of 2015. We're delighted and honored to have as our guest for the entire show, the Chief of Police of the City of Long Beach, Robert Luna. Chief, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me and uh, Happy New Year to everybody out there. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on your appointment as Chief. Uh, you've had a distinguished 29-year career with the Long Beach Police Department and, and many of us were just delighted to see you appointed uh, to be our next chief. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very humbled and honored uh, to be uh, now the lead of the department that I grew up on uh, and have done so much in, uh, in regards to the city, the police department, and just uh, great men and women who work for us. Yeah. Well, I think you're the right person at the right time to be in this role, so congratulations. Thank you. Let's talk about the crime figures that just came out. Amazingly, the lowest crime Viol lowest reported violent crime in 42 years and the lowest number of murders in recorded history. I think it's great news for our city. And uh, just to emphasize, it, it, it truly is a partnership. To achieve numbers like that, it takes a lot of work on a lot of different fronts. And I've got to start off by really complimenting the men and women of the Long Beach Police Department who are so committed uh, they do great work day in and day out, and, and that's one thing you'll see me doing as chief is going out and talking more about specifically how talented the people are that we have on the department. Uh, the rest of the city departments, it, it, when I say it, uh, it's a true team effort, parks and rec, the library, community development, public works, uh, for every employee in the city who works on every street uh, to, make it, uh, to make a difference. Uh, a lot of our crime fighting efforts are through community oriented public safety, which means long term problem solving so we don't have to continuously go back. But going back to the numbers, they are great numbers. Uh, we have some double digit decreases, for example, in homicides. We had 23 homicides for 2014, which is the lowest ever since we've been keeping records. But we also understand that there were still 23 victims that were homicide victims, and each of them are a tragedy. So we always aim to get better. But And you've done all of this in the face of uh, reductions in force. Uh, police staffing is 20% below what it was at the peak. Uh, it's quite remarkable. It is, and that's where I go back to specifically the men and women of the Long Beach Police Department. Uh, instead of making excuses and sitting back and saying, we can't do this, uh, we thought of if, if there's a famous picture of George Washington crossing the Delaware, <laughs> and if you go back to those times, he was up against uh, enormous odds. And, and I think great people rise to the challenge, and our employees did exactly that, and it is through them that we've achieved these great numbers, and we, c we want to continue uh, to lower them. And I know you fully believe that uh, policing is not just, or community safety is not just the job of the police department. You referenced other departments in the city that, that help parks, libraries and all, but it's also community groups that step up, nonprofit groups that step up and help make Long Beach safer. Absolutely, there are so many wonderful nonprofits uh, as an example in our city. And if you think of every group uh, that does so much work to roll up their sleeves every time somebody's donated money uh, to, for example, send a child to camp, uh, to sit down and mentor a child and talk to them about being respectful uh, and handling their uh, challenges at home in a different manner. Uh, the school district does a wonderful job. We have one of the best school districts in the country. 
that's what I'm talking about, that team effort, and I'm sure there's others. Uh, I can think of our city prosecutor working alongside with us in our gang injunction program. Uh, uh, Doug Halbert does an amazing job. So again, uh, I could sit here for hours and talk about how it is truly a team effort that these numbers are where they're at. And Long Beach is a city that does have a lot of volunteerism and uh, many have referred to it, and I think accurately, as the smallest big city in America. It does have a small town feeling where people know each other and cooperate with each other and this benefits the police department and the community. It absolutely does, and that is one thing you'll see us even continuously to push for more, is to get more people fully engaged, but this is a great city with great people, and it has so much potential, and I'm, I'm just proud to be the chief here. And I know that uh, you uh, very much focus, and we'll talk about this in the next segment, on, on reach out. But if a citizen has an interaction with a police officer where he or she feels that it wasn't handled properly, uh, you have an internal affairs uh, 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 department and uh, a number to call. Yes, uh, and the number's going to be displayed on your screen. It's, but I, it's 570-7343, the telephone number for Long Beach Police Department Internal Affairs. And tell but, us how that works. But I wanted to emphasize something. Uh, I can bombard you with numbers, again, going back to how, what a great job the men and women of this department do. Yes. The number of contacts made on a daily basis where if you think about a police officer's job and how difficult it is, how emotionally charged each contact is, the discipline and restraint used on almost every call is amazing. But if somebody's out there and they feel that they were wronged in a way or something didn't go right, uh, we're here to listen. We want to make sure that our employees are professional at all times and that our contacts go the best possible. So if anyone has concerns, they can absolutely call that number and please share with us uh, what happened in that contact. Thank you so much, Chief. And we'll be continuing with this marvelous discussion after we pause for these messages. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com. The Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Does your career involve legal work, law enforcement, fraud investigation, or crime scene analysis? You can increase your skill level and enhance your career by enrolling in the Basic Applied Forensic Science and Crime Analysis Certificate Program. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Continuing our conversation with Long Beach Chief of Police Robert Luna, let's just double back for a second, Chief, on the crime statistics. Even though uh, violent crime was significantly down and murders down, uh, property crimes continued to be a problem, particularly on the east side of town. Uh, property crime is a challenge to us, even though overall the numbers were down and, and were headed in a, in a decent direction. 
we understand that there are people who are still victims of crimes. And uh, for example, residential burglary uh, is a crime that we've had a lot of success with. Uh, and we've had success because people see suspicious activity, they call it into our communication center. Uh, the Long Beach Police Department still has a very, very good priority one response time. So for example, somebody calls, they see something suspicious, somebody not going door to door, they call the police, our response time for priority ones is under five minutes, we get there immediately, and usually we're able to catch people, and that's why I believe the rate is where it is, but again, uh, if you've been a victim of it, I understand that there's still work to do, but uh, that cooperation, that partnership is critical uh, in continuing to reduce that number. And I know one of the problems that uh, uh, Prop uh, 47 has uh, begun to cause is uh, instant release of, uh, of, of some uh, defendants that would formerly have been uh, tried uh, for a felony, but only now as a misdemeanor, and they, they get released very quickly. It is going to be a challenge for us. I, I can't tell the public it, quite yet how it'll work. We are uh, on top of it. We're going to analyze it. Uh, but I can tell you this, if you come to Long Beach and you're going to commit a crime, the chances are you're going to get caught because we have a community who's going to pay attention and we have officers and detectives who are very good at their job. There you go. Let's talk about the future a bit, and uh, body cameras uh, look like they're on the horizon for police officers. Uh, they are, and as, as we look at the future, uh, I, I think it's bright. Uh, some of the things that the community will see me out and about, uh, I will be very visible, uh, accessible, and responsive, as will all the members of our police department, and we're gonna be talking about the importance of partnerships. Uh, but body cameras is, is one of those uh, prevalent issues. Uh, the mayor consistently talks about having a police department of the 21st century. So as we look for opportunities to get better, uh, body cameras is one of those uh, opportunities to uh, increase public trust. So we have wor been working almost uh, for a full year with a committee on uh, all the issues surrounding body cameras, whether it's policy issues, the legal issues, the technology issues. Uh, if you can think of an officer wearing a body camera and going into a situation which is usually very confidential, a sex crime or a crime involving a child, that's not something that you want on video. So we're working through all those. We're very close. Uh, we expect to be running a pilot program where a certain amount of our officers uh, will be wearing these cameras. And I'm telling you, uh, I can't wait to get them out there from a couple of different perspectives because number one, it changes behaviors on all sides. Tele as television does, you televise public meetings and people behave differently. They absolutely do. And anytime people are on a video, usually they will behave differently. Some people will say, well, the officers will behave differently. I'm sure there'll be some of that. But I think for the first time, many people will see what police officers encounter day to day, yes. that human behavior yes. that at times can be uh, categorized as unbelievable. I'm looking forward to that because typically when you see a negative contact with the police or a use of force, you're watching a very small clip of it. You rarely see how it started or the whole contact and we're looking forward to being able to show uh, the public how that's gonna work. And I, I have been informed that in communities that have been using body uh, uh, cameras, the, the incidence of citizen complaints has decreased, that these cameras are helpful to the police in showing that they behave properly, not improperly. We have seen some national statistics that show that body cameras decrease the amount of citizen complaints, the uses of force, officer injuries, and do raise public trust. So as part of our pilot program, we intend to use Cal State Long Beach as part of an academic research uh, so right. we can validate a lot of those numbers because as we move forward and if this is something we are going to purchase, it's going to take a lot of resources and a huge commitment from our city to do this. And we understand that, we respect that, and we want to make sure that we are uh, putting together the best program possible. And uh, let's talk for a moment about community policing. I know this is a, a watchword for you and something that you believe in so strongly. 
just paint for us how this might even grow more into the future, community-based policing. At the foundation of everything that we do, that the law, any law enforcement agency does, specifically the Long Beach Police Department, it's all about public trust. It all comes back to public trust. In order to uh, maintain uh, and establish public trust, you have to have a style of policing that people uh, cooperate, respect. So our philosophy on policing will be one that is constitutionally based, which means it'll be fair, it'll be uh, unbiased, it'll be respectful, compassionate, but very effective. One where everybody understands that everybody matters. Everybody matters. And uh, that's going to be important to the way we police. And a big part of that is partnerships and collaborations. If, if we go back into the history of law enforcement, we talk about community policing, but even farther back, uh, Sir Robert Peel, his nine principles of policing, which really emphasize that the community is the police and the police are the community. Wow. And it's that level of cooperation that makes a community very effective. And uh, everything we talk about, our values, uh, will be forwarded in that manner. Outstanding. And uh, when this works, the community becomes the eyes and ears of the police department and you get a force multiplier. And that's exactly what we're pursuing. And if we want that community, that city that we all dream of, a city that is safe to live in and play in and, and, uh, and come and visit, we need everybody's cooperation. Public safety is everybody's Everybody. responsibility. We'll be back with this great conversation after these messages. How do you like your chances the rest of the week? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Bellflower, Long Beach. I think the dancing started right around the time we got Charter. All of a sudden, he's downloading all these music videos and prancing around like some show pony. I even caught him dancing along to musicals on demand. I've never seen him so much as tap his foot. I just didn't get it. And then one day, I did. Get TV, internet, and phone for $29.99 each per month. Charter, make way for more. We're back with the Chief, and uh, I want to call your attention to the new Straight Talk magazine, the January-February issue. Uh, on the cover, you'll see uh, a reference to this show with the Chief. And also, in the magazine, our guest column by uh, our guest, Robert Luna, on community policing and the importance of everyone getting involved. A very moving column. Thank you for contributing it, Chief. Absolutely. Well. We like to get up close and personal with our guests in the third segment, and uh, uh, your resume is, is quite remarkable, Chief. Uh, uh, your experience, your 29-year experience with the Long Beach Police Department has covered uh, uh, so many operational areas, investigatory, SWAT team, homicide, drugs, gang, and of course the last six years before you were appointed Chief as uh, head of the patrol division, which is uh, where the rubber meets the road, I guess. 
And uh, I call this the three E's, first experience in education. You're a graduate of Long Beach State, Go Beach. Yes, sir. And uh, extensive uh, postgraduate education at the Harvard University Senior Executive Program and also the FBI Academy. Uh, second E is education. And what I like to call the 30 ethnic reach out that you really passionately believe, and we talked about this earlier, of reaching out to the different communities. Yes, absolutely. So uh, let's spend a moment talking. Uh, you had the uh, opportunity to work under former Chief, now Sheriff Jim McDonald. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Chief McDonald is an extraordinary police executive, but he's an amazing human being. Uh, I worked, I had the pleasure and honor of working with him for four and a half years and uh, I learned so much from him and uh, I decided when he first came on, if you think about his background and experience, he had spent 29 years uh, and rose to the level of assistant chief at the Los Angeles Police Department, uh, second largest police department in the country. So you think, wow, there's so much to learn, his experiences, the good, the bad. And I'm telling you, it was exciting to, to stand next to him for those years. Uh, but his leadership style was very impressive. Uh, he is one that definitely, you knew he was in charge. He had a very clear vision of where he wanted to go, but he found a very unique balance of empowering the people around him. And uh, he empowered us uh, to make decisions, uh, empowered us to take risk. He created an atmosphere where you weren't afraid to be creative. You weren't afraid to go out and try new things. And as long as your heart was in the right place and you're trying to do the right things, uh, he always took the time to debrief you. Uh, but as, as when I talk about him being an extraordinary human being, he really connects with people. And, and, uh, and I learned so much from him about the way he was just so open and willing to just put his arm around people. To, he loved children. Yes. Uh, and I think he really made a very positive impact on this city in the four and a half years. And I look forward to seeing how he's going to do the same thing with the entire county of Los Angeles as our new sheriff. Wow. Well, you're an extraordinary human being also. And uh, well, I, I think you are the, the right person at the right time to be doing this and, uh, and to make and empower all of the communities of our great city feel that you and our police are on their side. We are. It's a team effort. And in order to be successful, uh, I, I called it a shared responsibility, that it is very important for us as the police department to be accountable, uh, to be able to police ourselves, and be there to listen to our community to make sure we're fulfilling the needs. But as I'm talking to you and our public, uh, if I can ask for one thing, and that is uh, not only to be fully engaged and ask those tough questions, but if for some reason somebody gets stopped by the police uh, and they have questions or doubts as to why they were pulled over, uh, do not argue and or decide to fight with the police out on a sidewalk, out on the street. We have mechanisms uh, to deal with this. We talked about earlier internal affairs. Uh, the public needs to know that we have extensive processes within the police department that deal not only with internal affairs issues or potential misconduct issues, but any time there's a use of force, which happens, by the way, less than 1% of the time we contact people, uh, there's an extensive investigation. There is a lot of scrutiny that goes into it, and we're consistently looking at how to improve ourselves, whether it's equipment, uh, training, uh, or anything of that sort. And in the minute that we have left in the segment, Chief, uh, the New York tragedy where two police officers were executed uh, brought, I think, the nation's attention to the fact that every police officer wearing a uniform, walking around in any city in America, is a potential target. And we don't realize that when we see police officers driving around in black and whites and all that. But, but every police officer knows that at any time, it could happen to them. In the 29 years I've been here, from the very first day I started this job, that was ingrained into all of our heads. Officer safety is critical to what we do because even though we've just seen it in New York, it's been a reality and the numbers and statistics play out that this job is very dangerous. The people who do it love it, 
but there's no doubt when they put on this uniform and this badge every day they take a risk when they go out there. Well said. And we'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. Bill Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Phil is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Phil Trainees. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. You've been planning this moment for a long time. It couldn't be a more perfect moment. And you have the perfect ring that will tell her, I want to love you forever. But nothing is perfect. Don't listen to that guy. He got the ring at McCarty's. McCarty's yes. makes a moment. There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Would you like to move ahead in the field of human resources and personnel management? Sign up for the Human Resources Management Certificate Program. You'll learn how to expand your knowledge and skills and advance in this dynamic industry. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. I think Long Beach is very fortunate to have a man of the caliber of our guest, Chief Robert Luna, as our Chief of Police. And I think we should respond to his appeal to make policing and community policing uh, a, a collective responsibility of the community. That will allow him and the men and women of the Long Beach Police Department to do their job more effectively, Chief. So thank you for all you and your men and women do every day. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak or to come on the show and speak to the public and I'm looking forward to going out and uh, I have very high standards of myself in our department and I'm hoping I can meet everybody's standard. Thanks Chief. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Please be with us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night everyone. Thank you. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press Telegram and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.